Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 26 is just a few days away and iOS 18.5 has been out to the public for almost a month at this point, but there's even more to talk about since the iOS 18.5 is out what's new video. We'll talk about some things coming up with iOS 26, what to expect, as well as some Apple news and also the overall experience. It's been almost a month, like I said, and we have a lot of issues to talk about. And we'll also talk about the issues or the experience you're having based off the YouTube community poll. We're at the time of this video, there's over 16,000 votes and 277 comments. I've gone through all the comments to determine what the experience is like now, and be sure to stick around toward the end of the video as I'll read some of your comments as well. Now, Apple the other day posted their yearly update on how many devices are running the latest updates with iOS 18. And you can see the overall adoption rate here with 88% of all devices introduced within the last four years use iOS 18. However, if you look at the overall breakdown of 82% of all devices use iOS 18, this is a little bit less year over year compared to iOS 17. So typically it's around about 84% or so, and it seems more and more people are skeptical of the updates. And of course, we'll talk about why in just a moment moment. Now, Apple Arcade is welcoming nine new games. This will be introduced within about a month or so, but you'll see Uno Arcade Edition. We have Angry Birds Bounce. And if we scroll down, you can see those here. So as we continue to scroll, all of these are available within the next month or so. And I'll link this in the description so you can check it out as well. Apple this week also lost an appeal to stop the new App Store changes from happening, which allows third parties to accept payments outside the App Store and bypass Apple. This was mainly pushed by Epic Games and Fortnite, but it seems different different people such as Spotify have already pushed this where they now offer a link so you can subscribe outside of the app store and then Apple doesn't get 30% of that. So that's something that's changed. They lost an appeal. I'm sure they'll continue to fight this, but it is something that's going to be happening from now on until something changes there. Also, PlayStation this week has added support to use Apple Pay for purchases. So if maybe you're purchasing something, maybe a new game, whether that's God of War, maybe a Gran Turismo game or something else, you'll be able to use Apple Pay from your phone to pay for that. Also, there's a new app that released this week that's a bit unexpected, and it's for Apple Watch. Snapchat for Apple Watch is now available. So if you have Snapchat installed, you can go to your watch app here, and you'll see that it says installed on Apple Watch. It auto-installed when it was available, and you can see it if we go down here, keep scrolling, and you'll see that Snapchat is available. So if you wanna use that on your watch and you don't have it installed on your phone already, it's now available for using that. Now, of course, we're all excited about WWDC 25 this week or the Worldwide Developer Conference for 2025. Apple every year at this time announces the new operating systems, we get the first betas, and we get to try them out for a few months until it releases to the public. This year, we're expecting some major updates and Apple has begun pushing different advertisements and more to go along with WWDC. DC. For example, we have it on the Apple website talking about it taking place on June 9th through the 13th. You'll watch it on June 9th at 1 p.m. if you want to see that in Eastern time. And then you could watch it on Apple or YouTube. And then if we go to the newsroom, they already unveiled the winners and finalists of the 2025 Apple Design Awards. If we scroll down, you can see here where we have different categories such as delight and fun for cap words. And as you scroll down, you can see all of the different winners and finalists. So it's great to see these, and I'll link this in the description below if you'd like to check it out. Apple has also posted the live stream sort of placeholder on YouTube. If we go to their channel, you can see 241 people are waiting for whatever reason, and it's taking place at 1 p.m. local time. Now, depending on where you live, this time will change based on your location. And then as far as anything to expect, well, I won't go into it as much in this video as there'll be another video probably tomorrow talking about all of the last minute leaks and rumors, but we do expect some updates even to Apple Watch. Watch OS is expected to get control center support for third party apps, similar to what we have currently with iOS, with iOS 18, where you can have third party apps that utilize the control center. So if we press and hold, add a control, if a developer chooses to add that, they can. So you'll see there's chat GPT, it's very, laggy and slow, but we have Gemini here, Halide, and other options. So we should see the same thing introduced for watchOS 26. So maybe we'll have that here, maybe with Snapchat and some other apps. Of course, many of us have been waiting for a new home OS. Now we don't know if this will replace HomePod's OS or something else, or audio OS as it's typically known, but we've heard a lot about Apple working on a new home OS for years as it's been hinted at in the code. 
A recent trademark by a shell company called Home Operations Sweet LLC has filed a new submission of a trademark for HomeOS. Now, we don't know if Apple will introduce this at WWDC, but it's certainly going to be something later this year if it's not already. Now, of course, many people have been saying, are they really replacing iOS 19 with iOS 26? And it definitely seems so. There's code that was hinted at all throughout today, people posting online with different code showing that it's going to be iOS 26. And many people are wondering, will we have round icons? According to Mark Gurman today, the icons are going to be mostly the same, but maybe with a redesigned look. So we'll have probably the same sort of look to them overall, but maybe sort of a glass appearance or something along those lines iOS 26 is now expected to add some more features for AirPods as well. According to 9to5Mac, Apple is planning to bring some new head gestures with improved pairing with devices, which is great, as well as improvements to the mic and maybe a camera trigger just using the little button on the side of the AirPods. So that's something that may be useful for some people. And then also an auto pause feature if you fall asleep. So maybe you're going into sleep mode, you're listening to your AirPods, once it figures out that you've fallen asleep, it could shut off the music or fade it out. So that's something we could get this year. Also 9 to 5 Mac says we could get animated artwork for the home screen, so or the lock screen. So maybe on the lock screen here, we could have animated artwork here. That seems nice. I'm not sure we'll have that. That's similar to live wallpapers. And then there's also many more details coming out for iOS 26 ahead of time, but I don't want to go into too much as some people don't want me to spoil that. So we'll dedicate that in a different video. Now this week, I've been very surprised. It's been almost a month since we had any sort of release. iOS 18.5.1 I thought would be released within the past couple of weeks, but Apple didn't push it like they did last year with 17.5.1. So it looks like we definitely could use that update. We've had a lot of issues with iOS 18.5, and it also seems that iOS 18.6 beta one may be delayed due to USA and China trade relations. So there's different deals ongoing that looks like it may have delayed it because they're planning to bring Apple intelligence to China. So according to the financial times, they reported the delay and it's been a very long time again between those different releases. So maybe we'll have a ton of releases this week, but I'm hoping maybe we'll just get the iOS 26 beta one on June 9th after WWDC. And then maybe we'll get those other updates later in the week. I really hope they don't push them all at once as that'd be a bit confusing for a lot of people. Of course, we'll get to test that throughout the summer and I would expect iOS 26's public release or public beta first in the end of June or early July with a public release typically in September around the iPhone 17 launch. Now, speaking about the iPhone 17, I've shown it in detail as far as what we expect the design to look like. And I know a lot of people don't think this is what it's going to look like, but if any year over year is an indication, well, last year and the year before that, and the year before that I had these dummy units and they were spot on. So this is what we expect the camera tray or the camera bump to look like. Also, future iPhones get a much faster charging wireless charger, it seems, as this was recently uncovered by 91 Mobiles. They found a listing in Taiwan that shows Qi 2.2 support up to 50 watts. So they actually found a MagSafe adapter that had the capability up to 50 watt wireless charging. Now, whether or not Apple actually utilizes that, has the cooling for that, we don't really know. But they could cool this enough, cool the phones enough, where it could technically have 50 watt charging, similar to OnePlus or Oppo. So I would love to see that. And maybe we'll see that with iOS or iPhone 17 or iPhone 18. When it comes to the overall experience of iOS 18.5, it may surprise you that based on almost 300 comments, many report that it's noticeably smoother and performs better, especially on iPhone 16 pro and iPhone 16 pro max. This is also true for some older phones as well, where people reported iPhone 13 pro and iPhone 11 seem smoother in general, but there are issues that follow over time. So in general, when you first booted it up, you're using it, it works fine. Animations are smooth. Scrolling is smooth, but then all of a sudden you run into a bunch of issues. So it does seem a reboot fixes these issues, at least temporarily, but then they come back. According to your comments, there's a litany of complaints. Many now report that the mail app is showing a blank screen. Mac rumors even posted this as well from their forums, and it's just either not responding or can become very buggy or glitchy. Restarting the phone seems to help, but then the issue returns again. So there's some very odd issues going on here. Oddly enough though, it seems that it gets sluggish and slow over time. And then again, you'll have micro stutters. You'll have lag in games. You'll see it's nice and smooth. Now, if I go into sports, scroll home, go into music, it seems to be smooth, but then at times all of a sudden it will just lag. 
Sometimes for me, one of the major issues though is connectivity. And I've seen many of you report this and I've seen my family members report this to me as well, which is pretty rare. So if I'm at home on Wi-Fi, sometimes it just won't work. So I'll test it on my iPad and then it won't work, but then I'll pick up maybe a Samsung phone and it works fine. Or I'll go to my Mac and it works fine, but then I'll turn it into airplane mode, turn off airplane mode, and then all of a sudden it works again. So there's some very odd bugs going on here. And I found the same to be true when I was at a restaurant today. I had cellular connectivity with about three bars or so. Right now I have two, but I had three or four bars and I had no internet. It was just incredibly slow. I'd turn it off and on. It would work pretty well for a moment and then just not work again. So definitely some odd issues there. CarPlay is still having a lot of random disconnects. I'm seeing that myself in one of my cars. And also the touchscreen responsiveness remains. And it doesn't matter if you have a screen protector on it or not. So I've used both of these devices, one with and one without a screen protector. And I have basically the same experience where sometimes you just go to maybe go into settings and you have to touch a couple times before it reacts. So some very odd issues. The same is true with the keyboard being slow and then others report notifications and sound glitches are all over the place as well. Of course, the wallpaper dimming bug is here. So if I scroll up, You'll see it dims right there. It sometimes seems to go away and then it returns. So for me, it's actually been better in this update, but not perfect and it definitely has its issues. When it comes to performance, well, I mentioned that a little bit and it's fast and smooth to begin with. Things like ProMotion seem nice and smooth. Most people report it's seeming to work better this time around. So at 120 Hertz, but then again, it slows down and you have to reboot it. So definitely some very odd issues here. I had to reboot my iPad earlier as well. So as far as issues I was having with that, my battery wasn't charging. It was sitting at 11% and it wouldn't charge. I plugged it in the charger. It didn't work. I rebooted it, unplugged and replugged the charger and it finally started to charge. So just before filming this video, I had all sorts of odd charging issues with it. And I've heard that from many of you as well. I've seen that on my iPhone with wireless charging and wired charging. And I've heard from some that it just won't wireless charge at all. As far as heat and thermals, well, for the most part, it's pretty good. I was using this outside today, using it with a robotic mower and the phone was extremely hot, but it was hot outside about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So it was pretty warm. I expect it when it's warm outside, I've got it in my hands and it's running an app. It was pretty warm, warm enough that it dimmed the screen, even though it was at full brightness. So I'm not seeing it get too hot in regular ambient temperatures, but let's take a look at the thermals currently just from holding it. So if we take a look at the hottest point on the back, we're at about 89 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit overall. So maybe a little bit warmer than it was before. It is getting a little bit warmer outside where I live as well. So it's about 74 degrees ambient temperature inside though. Now, as far as battery life, well, it's been really hit or miss. It's actually been pretty bad for me overall. But first, let's take a look at one of your battery lives that you've sent in. Thanks to Abishek for sending this in. This is on a new iPhone 16e with 100% battery health, and he had five hours and 41 minutes of screen on time, 54 minutes of screen off time, and used 50% of his battery. So based on the day, it seems like he's getting phenomenal battery life, at least on iPhone 16e, but it is brand new and seems to be doing pretty well overall. So you can see that here charged to 80% limit and whether or not it was charged during this time, I don't know, but much better than he had before on the iPhone 11 pro max that he had. So in general, it's doing well. If we take a look at my battery, Take a look at battery health. I'm at 100% capacity at 219 cycles. I'm seeing more and more of you around 250 cycles where it drops down to 99. I would expect the same soon. And you can see additional details here from coconut battery. Now, as far as battery life, let's take a look. Today I had three hours and 55 minutes of screen active time, two hours and 26 minutes of screen idle time and used almost 100% of my battery. This app in particular does use a lot of power though. The day before, two hours and 41 minutes, and I use 75% of my battery. It's just my home and lock screen. Mail is using background activity, and I'm about to switch to a third-party mail app. So I may do that and see if it really fixes a lot of my issues here. But in general, battery's been pretty terrible for me, at least. Now, as far as what you had to say about battery life, well, this week, only 43% of users reported good or better battery life compared with what they had before or iOS 18.4.1. Last week, it was 45% that said it was better. And the first week, it was 69% of users saying it was significantly better. So it looks like it's deteriorating over time. I'm not sure if that's just apps that are being used that aren't optimized or something else is going on. 
Now, as far as benchmarks, let's go ahead and take a look. We'll go into CPU history. I ran it earlier and what I'm seeing again is inconsistent results. If I run it once, I get okay results, 3,447 for single core, 8,230 for multi-core. And this is after doing nothing on the phone for probably a half hour or more. You'll see before I had really good results, but I have to run it multiple times. And you'll see here, this was last week, 8240, then 7620, then 8759, and then it goes back. So it looks like if I run it three times, it's great the third time after waiting about five minutes in between each time. So very odd results overall. Now, as far as the overall experience from your point of view, let's go ahead and read some of your comments. Jeff V71 said, iOS 18.5 on an iPhone 16e, and I think it's great. Battery life could always be slightly better, but no hiccups here. Gregory Kusiak 5424 said, I'm having weird things happen with the Mail app, and sometimes notifications aren't timely. Battery life isn't the greatest either. Simon Drew 8641 says, iPhone 11 running iOS 18.5. Apart from some micro stuttering, I'm pleasantly surprised how well this version is working for me. Mark Kuznetsov said, I just experienced a crazy overheating of 16 Pro. I don't mean very warm, I mean hot. Had to shut the phone down. This is my first iPhone recently bought. Gotta say, more than enough system bugs. The touchscreen is much worse than with 18.1 it came with before the update. Feels like sometimes I have to try several times before the screen responds. Willie Seth 740 said, 15 Pro Max running iOS 18.5, issues with Bluetooth connectivity, battery draining much faster than when I updated the phone, screen touch issues, especially when someone is calling me, random reboots, basically a very bad experience for me. And no, hard reset or rebooting the phone didn't help either. Lokman Syed said, iOS 18.5 has been significantly worse on my iPhone 16 Pro Max than I ever expected. CarPlay disconnects randomly. When I try to connect my AirPods, it won't show up. Battery life has been draining significantly more than I expected. Now, I think many of us are wondering, will iOS 26, announced at WWDC, actually fix many of the issues we've been having with iOS 18? I think in the long term, many of us have hoped that it would get better because... Apple is known for stability. They were once the standard and also the standard for battery life, but it seems to really have fallen behind with overall stability lately. I'm really hoping it gets much better and maybe iOS 18 is just harder to fix and it's better spending time on the new operating system or some underlying code that's going to make things much better. We don't really know. We've only heard that they're working on stability. Of course, we expect a redesign and usually when you do that, stability isn't really a factor. So we'll have to wait and see what really happens here, but I really hope it gets much better as they were definitely the standard at one point and have fallen behind. So that's everything with iOS 18.5. I'm looking forward to Apple fixing issues with iOS 18 with 18.5.1, but I'm really looking forward to iOS 26. I've been wanting a redesign for years and I'm looking forward to that the most. Let me know what you're looking most forward to at WWDC and be sure to check back probably tomorrow for a new video going over the latest features and things that are leaked right before the release of WWDC. Of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.